what is going on everybody i am back with my second video we are going to look at trudeau's comments at cop 26 this was on november 1st a little, uh, a little over a week ago now I think it only runs about five minutes, so uh, let's see what he's got to say. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Merci. Bonjour. Je suis content de représenter les Canadiens dans le cadre de cette rencontre historique. In Canada, there was a town called Lytton. I say was because on June 30th, it burned to the ground. What happened to that town was horrible. But we need to take what he says next into context, I think. The day before, the temperature had hit 49.6 degrees Celsius, the hottest ever recorded in our country. Canada is warming on average so while it was extremely hot that day, as far as I know, and it might be hard to find the reports now, I think it was sparks from a train that was passing through there that originally ignited the blaze, which leads me to point out that per government website information, 50% of fires are started by human cause, the other 50% roughly are by lightning. So to say that climate change was responsible for the absolute destruction of a town, I think is a bit of a stretch in this case. Twice as quickly as the rest of the world. And in our north, it's three times quicker. How is that possible? The science is clear. I we must more and faster. So that's the pledge and the call I bring to this historic meeting. We've already laid the groundwork. In 2015 at the COP in Paris, I committed that Canada would put a price on pollution. So currently that price on pollution is sitting at 40 bucks a ton, 2021. They have committed to bump that up to a hundred and seventy bucks a ton in 2030. So to kind of put that into a better perspective right now, when you go and fill up at the pumps, 8.8 .8 cents of the total cost is due to carbon tax. You see the bump to 170, it will be 39.6 cents of tax. So when they say they want to fight climate change faster and you know, more aggressively, the only option that the government has is to make your life more expensive. And you can see from the data that has been put out by the BC government, which I believe has had the carbon tax in place for about a decade now, it does not impact emissions. It just makes life more costly, especially for lower income families. And it doesn't achieve anything as far as environmental goals. We did that. And despite stiff political opposition, the Supreme Court upheld it and Canadians supported it. Because the judges are elections. appointed by you. We know pollution pricing is key to getting emissions down while getting innovation up and running. What did I just say about BC? The price trajectory is one of the most globally ambitious ones and it's rising to $170 a ton in 2030. That's going to hurt the pocketbook. Meaningful price on pollution designed not just to make life cleaner, but also make life more affordable and less expensive. Did you just hear what he said? More affordable. 
how is that even possible? Now they will come back and say, it's through the rebate system, but there's already reports out that say part of the funds that they currently collect end up hitting general revenue. And if the whole idea behind the program is to wean you off of fossil fuels, then why are you refunding this money in the first place? It just adds this big level of bureaucracy and achieves nothing in the end. For Canadians. I call on other countries to do the same. Just as we've agreed to a minimum corporate tax, we must work together to ensure it is no longer free to pollute anywhere in the world. So in case you missed it, Canada has signed on to a global minimal tax agreement. One further step in reducing our sovereignty and being able to decide our own path forward. While I agree that it's punitive to put a carbon tax on industry within Canada, a standard tariff does. It just keeps bumping up prices and who ultimately loses? Consumers. That means establishing a shared minimum standard for pricing pollution. Of course, what's even better than pricing emissions is ensuring that they don't happen in the first place. Which brings me to my next major commitment. We'll cap oil and gas sector emissions today and ensure they decrease tomorrow at a pace and scale needed to reach net zero by 2050. What about Quebec's cement factories? What about Ontario's manufacturing? What about shipping industry, aerospace? What about all of these other industries? This is not based in reality. It has nothing to do with the environment. It is simply an attack on Alberta, Saskatchewan, while tanker ships keep flowing down the St. Lawrence, delivering Saudi oil to the east coast of Canada. That's no small task for a major oil and gas producing country. It's a big step that's absolutely necessary. To do our part globally, we've doubled our climate financing, including up to a billion dollars for the transition away from coal. And to help deal with the consequences of climate change, Canada's making our first contribution to the Adaptation Fund. On doit trouver des solutions. Who sees any of this money? I mean, clearly there is a demand for oil and gas and there will be for a long time. So why are we paying industries to close down and paying to retrain workers when there's clearly a market demand for it. It's just ludicrous. If anyone knows French, feel free to translate.
need to do better. That's why we're here today. How are a bunch of bureaucrats and politicians going to impact emissions on a global basis? I mean, if Canada wants to truly help in the fight to reduce emissions, we would be exporting our clean tech and our LNG over to India and China. Simply put, that is all that we would need to do at this juncture. Take all the money that we make off of selling those products, put it into new tech, and just let the thing keep rolling. But instead, we've decided to kneecap ourselves and throw our economy in the dirt. In case you hadn't noticed, the UN has been saying the same thing for, I think, 40 years. Quote me if I'm wrong, probably more than that. Every decade, it's the last decade that we can ever do anything about any climate change or global warming, and then they just rebrand it as something else. And here we are scamming people some more. Our time to step up and step up together. Merci. That's the end of video two. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you got ideas for the next one, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Peace.